Hello there. What I've been doing is heating this nickel ridiculously red hot. Here's some nice cool water. Put them together and you hear the sizzle and the sound is stopped. Uh, oh, cool the tongs down. And I want to note something here. The temperature of the water is exactly the same as the temperature of this piece of metal. What I'm doing this for is to make a visual representation of what's happening in this question here. So let me set this aside and let's begin talking about how to go about solving this particular question. Now, um, what did I just do? I was just showing the idea that when you take a hot piece of metal and drop it into cool water, even though the metal starts much hotter than the water and the water starts much cooler than the metal, whatever temperature you get at the end is the same final temperature for both the metal and the water. So, uh, let me dry my hands after having reached into the beaker, and let's make a note of that. In this question, it says you're putting that many grams of metal heated to that temperature into that many grams of water. At the beginning, the metal is that temperature and the water is this temperature in degrees Celsius. And at the end, both are this temperature. So this is for temperature of both water and metal at the end. Okay, this is the temperature of both at after they've been combined. What we're trying to figure out is I, what's the specific heat capacity of the metal based on the information given here. So if we have mass and temperature and specific heat capacity, we know we need the equation Q equals mc delta T, where this is energy, mass, specific heat capacity, and delta T is change in temperature. So for the metal, if we want C, and we divide this side by M delta T, and divide this side by M delta T, to give Q over M delta T equals C for the metal. So we need the energy from the metal, the mass of the metal, and the delta T for the metal. Now the delta T for the metal is not a problem. It starts at 200 degrees and ends at 30.8 degrees. So that's going to give us the delta T. The mass of the metal is not a problem, it's this. Though some unworried students doing this question without paying attention might accidentally use this number. That's the mass of the metal according to this particular scenario. This, on the other hand, you'll notice is absent. This is energy, which is either joules or calories, and there's no mention of that anywhere here. So we have a problem because we're trying to solve for the specific heat capacity, but we need this Q value. So we're going to take advantage of something. And I'm going to just pull out this once again as a visual aid. We need to make an assumption. When the piece of metal went into this beaker, the number of joules that the metal lost as it cooled down from uh, 200 degrees down to 30.8 degrees Celsius is exactly the same as the number of joules the water absorbed when it warmed up from 21.1 degrees Celsius up to 30.8. So we're going to say that the amount of energy lost by the metal is equal to the energy gained by the water. So Q from metal is equal to Q of water. But we must say one thing. If the metal was cooling down, think about that, in order to cool down, something has to lose energy. That means there's a negative sign for the Q of the metal. If the water was warming up, it must have been gaining energy. So its Q must have a positive sign. So whatever the Q of the water was, the Q of the metal must be opposite. If water has a positive Q, metal must be negative. If water has a negative Q, metal must be positive. They're, op they're going to be opposites because one is doing the opposite with the other. It's because we're making the assumption that when the metal went into the water, all of the energy that it lost 
was gained by the water. So we're going to say Q for med equals Q for water. Now we're going to do this. We're going to take Q equals MC delta T for the water. We're going to figure out what Q was using the water, plug it into this equation right here for metal, and I'll even put metal right there. And once we have Q from the thing for water, we can find the mass of the metal and the delta T for the metal, and we can get to find the specific heat capacity of the metal. So that's the idea, is step one, we set up all the things to the equation make sure they're good, and then we're gonna say, okay, find Q for the water, plug that in for the metals equation, and solve the specific heat capacity of metal. So that I will do. Q for water equals MC delta T. So Q for water is the mass, 100.0 grams of water. Times, and you don't have to memorize this, this will be given on chart. 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. That's the specific heat capacity of water. And then delta T, the water, what is the delta T? Delta T, it water rose from 30 from 21.1 to 30.8, so 21.1 degrees Celsius. Actually, I suppose I should, I'll do it the other way around in order to give it a positive number because it's a positive delta T. That should be uh, 9.7 degrees Celsius. Let's see, actually, I'm not sure if that's visible off screen right there, so 9.7 degrees Celsius. And it's positive 9.7 degrees Celsius. Okay, so times 9.7 degrees Celsius. And when you do that right there, that uh, calculation, let me just check on the computer so I don't happen to have the calculator with me handy at the moment. Um, that comes out to 4,058 joules absorbed by the water. So, okay, there's 4,058 joules absorbed by the water. We're going to say if this many joules got absorbed by the water, the exact same number of joules got released by the metal. So I'm going to take this joules absorbed by water, and I'm going to bring that and put it over here into this equation right here. So now let's plug in the numbers. So if the metal, if the water absorbed this many joules, it should be positive. If the metal was cooling down, it must have been losing joules. So Q for the metal would be negative 4,058 joules. The mass of the metal is 7.5 grams. So this is joules lost by the metal right here. So 7.5 grams is the mass of the metal. And then degrees Celsius. Okay, so you gotta find delta T. So delta T is going to be, let's see, it cooled down. So I'll just make sure this gives a negative number. 30.8 is the final temperature, minus 200. And that's going to equal, uh, let's see, check the calculations. Okay, there you go. Negative 169.2 degrees Celsius. Let's see, double checking, yeah. So that's the delta T. And again, it's because the metal cooled down, it should have a negative delta T. So I'll put that negative 169.2 degrees Celsius. So there you go, joules per gram degree Celsius. This will give the correct units for specific capacity, which again has the units of joules per gram degree Celsius, or calories per gram degree Celsius if you're doing calories. Um, when you do this math, we got a round for sig figs. That's four, that's four, that's two. So let's round this to two significant figures. Uh, 3.2 joules per gram degrees Celsius. Let me just check that I remember that correctly, yeah. It comes out to 3.2 joules per gram degrees Celsius for this fictitious metal. Um, again, the overview, oh, let's box the answers we always should. Again, the overview, Q plus MC delta T. Solve for specific heat capacity. Recognize that we have the mass of the metal and the delta T for the metal. 
but we don't have q. So we're going to say that whatever the metal lost, the water must have gained. So we solve for q for the water, and there's the mass of the water, and the specific heat capacity of the water can be looked up. It's always provided you don't have to memorize it. And this is the delta T for the water raising from this temperature to this temperature. So you find the energy absorbed by the water, plug it into this equation because it's the same as the energy lost by the metal. So there's the energy lost by the metal, that's the mass of the metal, that's the change in temperature for the metal, and that's the specific heat capacity of the metal. And that's how we go about doing this calculation.